His name is Dennis Erickson, and he is head coach of the most successful program in college football. But in 1991, number one was supposed to be out of reach. This would be a young team playing a tough schedule. But the Canes consider the impossible as second nature, and the result would be astounding. After crushing bowl-bound Arkansas to inaugurate the campaign, Miami faced highly touted Houston in the home opener. Right from the get-go, the Hurricanes harassed Heisman candidate David Klingler without mercy. The seemingly invincible Houston scoring machine had hit a brick wall. would be one of those nights for Mr. Klingler and company, an altogether too familiar experience for Orange Bowl visitors. On the other side of the football, Klingler's opposite number would enjoy a much more pleasant evening. Miami quarterback Gino Toretta served notice that the 91 Hurricane offense would merit mention in the same breath as his illustrious predecessor. With a range of talent that ran the gamut from veteran Lamar Thomas the sophomore sensation, Kevin Williams. Kevin Williams, cross 50-45, the 40. He is going to go. This is all the way. Touchdown, Kevin Williams. 51 yards for the score. A 40 to 10 blowout propelled Miami into national title consideration, and the ascent was just beginning. The Hurricanes' big play offense begins with a rather basic premise: dominance on the line. Best known for a sophisticated passing attack, the Canes run the ball with equal success. And number 30, Stephen McGuire, set the pace in 1991. Through 10 games, he was the workhorse, rushing for over 600 yards before being sidelined by a late-season injury. McGuire ran behind a giant line that featured All-American Leon Searcy and compatriots Claude Jones, Mario Cristobal, Rudy Barber, Kip Vickers, Marty Golliher, and Kelvin Harris. Only a junior, McGuire returns next year, as does freshman running back Larry Jones, the team's second leading ground gainer. In the hurricane scheme, running backs must double as receivers, and sophomore Martin Patton more than filled the bill. A terrific open field runner, Patton rounded out a traditionally strong core of running backs. And speaking of predictions, who's that man throwing the football? Gino Toretta is merely the latest in a long line of superstar signal callers who have matriculated at the University of Miami. Rifle arm, intelligent, a leader, and like all Miami quarterbacks, blessed with an all-star receiving core. The number 90 tight end Joe Moore was a force over the middle, a vital cog in the short passing game. Number 35, junior Darrell Spencer, was one of a half dozen games to catch more than 20 balls. And his speed and shiftiness made him quite a threat after the reception. Of course, Miami has become synonymous with the long ball. And when you have a receiver with the speed and power of Coleman Bell, a short pass often accomplishes the same purpose. But flying footballs remain the staple of the Hurricane Air Force, and speedsters like Horace Copeland help make it a thing of pure beauty. A pleasant surprise in 1991 was the emergence of sophomore Kevin Williams, who quickly established himself as one of the most exciting players in the game. Indeed, Williams was named first team All-America, one of five hurricanes so honored in this most magical of seasons. If number one was the goal, then experience was the key. And the reliable performance of wideout Lamar Thomas was the standard by which all others were measured.
team's leading receiver averaged 16 yards per catch, including six touchdowns. After throttling Houston, the Canes would register lopsided victories over bowl-bound Tulsa and Oklahoma State, setting up a classic showdown with a top 10 powerhouse. This July on College Sports Television, every Wednesday night, it's the College Rodeo Championship Series. As the temperature begins to rise, so does the action in the Cape Cod Baseball League. Plus, continual coverage of the Ultimate Players Championships. The best of the best battle for supremacy in the men's North-South Lacrosse All-Star Game and the men's and women's Under-19 Championships. Just a sampling of what's on CSTV this month. The first 24-hour network dedicated to college sports. Log on to CSTV.com for more details. Here we go, steal, down the middle, 101, bam! Oh, oh, did you see what I see? Because I saw a robbery. Does <laughs> hey, uh, anybody want to coach? Yeah, yeah, we had up, man. Hey, you crazy, man, that's Corinthian leather. And use the footstool to get to the refrigerator. I'm running all over y'all like a treadmill. Oh, ball, ball. I am the greatest. I'm the greatest. Can't stop it. It's bad hot, I'm telling you. I'm just super nice in it, you know? That's all. When you nice, like right? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> That's all that like like walk Everyone's done it. This crowd is just taking it to a new level. See the nation's best jump, cut, dive, and give and go to one team is crowned the ultimate players. UPA, the ultimate players college championship. Tournament continues Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern, only on CSTV, the new home of college sports. The buck starts here. It's a showdown of America's best college rodeo athletes. Get into the ring with the fastest, wildest, and most fearless competitors to hit the dirt. The NIRA College Rodeo Championship Series. Kick back and go for broke. This Wednesday, July 16th at 10.30 p.m. on College Sports Television, the new home of college sports. It's no full. Penn State's Joe Paterno is an advocate of hard-nosed defensive football. Unfortunately for his Nittany Lion offense, so is Dennis Erickson. On a balmy October afternoon, the Hurricanes defense continued the dominance that had allowed just two touchdowns in the season's first month. It was business as usual in the Penn State backfield. Tony Saka was sacked nine times. Two and one half of those credited to number 98, sophomore Rusty Madaris. <laughs> Meanwhile, sure footed Carlos Huerta was enjoying a stellar outing. His two first half field goals sent the team to the locker room knotted at six all, setting the stage for a second half hurricane explosion. Long scoring passes to Horace Copeland and Lamar Thomas put Miami in position to win the game. And Hurricane special teams would seal the victory with the most electrifying play of the season. Elkowski gets the kick away. Looking at it is Williams on the run. Has it at the 10. Stop. Comes to the near side. Inside 15, 20. Gets to the 25. Beat the man 30. 35, 40. Good race. 40, 30, 20. He will go all the way, 19 yards, Kevin Williams. Kevin Williams' 91-yard punt return was not only a school record, it was the difference in a hard-fought 26-20 victory. The foot in Miami football belonged to All-American Carlos Huerta, the second leading scorer in NCAA history. Number 27 owned 13 of 14 school career kicking records and the NCAA mark for consecutive extra points. Carlos Huerta, an exciting dimension to an explosive attack. And speaking of extra dimension, welcome to the Terror Dome, also known as the Orange Bowl. People in white jerseys believe this place to be a cross between the Bermuda Triangle and the twilight zone, where nothing seems to go quite according to plan. 
college football's ultimate home field advantage has resulted in an amazing run of 45 consecutive U.M. victories, second longest in NCAA history. Perhaps it's because of the torrid love affair between the Miami faithful and their beloved Hurricanes. Pride and passion mixed with speed, size, and skill makes for a winning combination. Home cooking seems to make every hit just a little bit louder. And a sea of orange helps put the rattle in dazzle. Or maybe it's simply that the Kings are smarter than their visitors. For the second year in a row, Miami football will graduate every one of its seniors. An enviable record among the ranks of the elite. Against an imposing 1991 schedule that included five teams invited to bowl games, the Canes would employ every weapon at their disposal. The mystique of the Orange Bowl was one. Defense was another. The Canes may not have invented gang tackling, but surely they own the patent. It begins with a solid front wall that featured a pair of senior standout defensive tackles, number 97, Anthony Hamlet, and number 95, Eric Miller. <laughs> Underclassmen would comprise the figurative and literal bulk of the defense. Number 76, Mark Caesar, made his 290-pound presence felt all over the field. The unyielding size of Caesar was complemented by the strength and quickness of sophomore Kevin Patrick, number 86. But for all of Patrick's heroics, it was fellow sophomore Rusty Madaris, whom enemy ball carriers feared most. His 10 sacks led the team and his 23 quarterback pressures were of equal import. Team speed, team strength, a Miami trademark, and the swarming mass of orange around the football were sure to include Hurricane linebackers. Jesse Armstead and Michael Barrow were perfect examples of the prototype Miami backer. Equal parts savvy and savvy. Quick to the ball and deadly tacklers. Individuals are blessed with the skills of number 45, All-American Darren Smith. Only a junior, Smith is equally adept in all phases of the game. His inspired play was critical to Miami's overwhelming defensive success. As a team, the 91 Canes allowed less than 10 points per game, lowest in the nation. The Hurricanes entered the year with unproven cornerbacks, but the question marks wouldn't last long. Number 47, Ryan McNeil, led the team in interceptions. Herbert James lived up to his promise, while Hurley Brown and Charles Farms brought veteran leadership to the secondary. But it was the play of junior free safety Darrell Williams that provided the catalyst. Number 31 was voted first team All-America on the strength of his consistency and outright ability. Perfect after eight games, Miami would take to the road for a classic showdown against undefeated top-ranked arch rival Florida State. At stake, a possible national championship in a battle royal matching pride and perfection. The 
University of Arizona. The place to discover to create to experience to make a difference the place is right here. The University of Arizona in Tucson. Everyone's done it. This crowd is just taking it to a new level. See the nation's best jump, cut, dive, and give and go to one team is crowned the ultimate players. UPA, the ultimate players college championship. Tournament continues Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern, only on CSTV, the new home of college sports. This July on college sports television. Every Wednesday night, it's the college rodeo championship series. As the temperature begins to rise, so does the action in the Cape Cod Baseball League. Plus, continual coverage of the Ultimate Players Championships. The best of the best battle for supremacy in the men's North-South Lacrosse All-Star Game. And the men's and women's Under-19 Championships. Just a sampling of what's on CSTV this month. The first 24-hour network dedicated to college sports. Log on to CSTV.com for more details. Tallahassee, Florida, November 16, 1991. Miami enters Seminole Country and does so in a manner befitting a winner. On their first offensive series, the Canes shatter Seminole pretensions of invincibility. Miami has won its last seven games against teams ranked number one and is not daunted by FSU. Quarterback on the take and the give. McGuire, touchdown Miami! When Stephen McGuire pulls into the end zone, the Canes offense has made its point. We cannot be intimidated. The UM defense will add the exclamation mark. The remainder of the first half sees the game materialize into a defensive slugfest. Although the Seminoles managed to take the lead, their advantage never becomes insurmountable. FSU receivers pay a heavy price for each reception until Charles Farm breaks the ice with a key pick. The play signals a subtle shift in momentum. Although the Canes trail 16-7 late in the third quarter, they are very much in the game. Here's the setback. Toretta on the gym. McGuire finds a hold of midfield to the 45, to the 40, 35, 30, down to the 28, and dragging the tackler down with him. That was LeVon Brown. Midway through the final stanza, a Huerta field goal cuts the margin to six. With less than four minutes remaining, Miami drives for the winning score. Toretta, the quarterback, on the take and the give. McGuire to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, to the 16-yard line. Fourth down and eight from the Seminole 13. A number one ranking hangs in the balance. With Larry Jones behind it. Gino looking, throwing. Mark Copeland, three-yard line. First and goal, Miami. They finally found Hart. 
and it is first and goal for Miami. So Larry Jones, he is at the guard. Touchdown, Miami! Larry Jones on a base hit and a score. Larry Jones' touchdown burst walks the Canes to a stunning 17-16 victory and the New Year's Day Orange Bowl berth. Dennis Erickson will be named Coach of the Year and subsequent victories over Boston College and bowl-bound San Diego State will cap an undefeated regular season. The Hurricanes are just 60 minutes away from their fourth national title in nine years. Hi, Tito. I hope you enjoy the empanadas and coke. Love, Mom. Aww. Hey, man. Mmm, something smells good. Hi, Tito. Hey, man. What the... This July on College Sports Television. Every Wednesday night, it's the College Rodeo Championship Series. As the temperature begins to rise, so does the action in the Cape Cod Baseball League. Plus, continual coverage of the Ultimate Players Championships. The best of the best battle for supremacy in the men's North-South Lacrosse All-Star Game. And the men's and women's Under-19 Championships. Just a sampling of what's on CSTV this month. The first 24-hour network dedicated to college sports. Log on to CSTV.com for more details. The Buck starts here. It's a showdown of America's best college rodeo athletes. Get into the ring with the fastest, wildest, and most fearless competitors to hit the dirt. The NIRA College Rodeo Championship Series. Kick back and go for broke. This Wednesday, July 16th at 10.30 p.m. on College Sports Television, the new home of college sports. It's no bull. Everyone's done it. This crowd has just taken it to a new level. See the nation's best jump, cut, dive, and give and go till one team is crowned the ultimate players. UPA, the ultimate players college championship. Tournament continues Wednesday at 7.30 Eastern, only on CSTV, the new home of college sports. January 1st, 1992. The 58th annual Orange Bowl unveils a classic matchup. Perfect through 11 games, the Canes must stop mighty Nebraska, the country's number one rushing team. Against this Big 8 juggernaut, UM will reply in typical hurricane fashion. The greater the challenge, the more emphatic their response. The course of the contest is determined on the opening kickoff. C.J. Richardson unloads on the Husker return man, offering the international television audience a taste of things to come. Michael Barrow and Mates prepare to meet the charge head on. It's quickly. 
three and out for the beleaguered Midwesterners, who appeared no match for Miami's awesome team speed. On their first possession, the Canes stretched Nebraska's overtaxed defense. College football's most electrifying offense shifts into high gear. Target of choice, Kevin Williams. Dino, long down. Take, short drop. Looking, throwing, looping, end zone. Kevin Williams, touchdown of Miami. Fifty-one yards in five plays. And the Toretta Williams combo accounts for almost all of the real estate. With the game just two minutes old, Miami has already established a smooth, relentless rhythm. The Huskers are forced to punt for a second time, and Gino Toretta is soon back in the spotlight. The Hurricane O takes flight once again. This time it's acrobatic Lamar Thomas on the receiving end. His twisting, leaping grab sets the table for Carlos Huerta, who coolly pounds home three more. On Nebraska's next play from scrimmage, Ryan McNeil single-handedly busts the option. His fumble recovery galvanizes the crowd, fires up his teammates, and ultimately brings on Carlos Huerta for an encore appearance. The 24-yard chip shot increases the lead to 13 points, and the balance of the first half sees Miami display a bewildering array of weapons. Only a pair of untimely penalties keeps the score respectable in every aspect of the game. UM enjoys complete command. Miami's success in the air is a direct result of a supposedly crippled ground game. Playing without their two top running backs, the Kings call on number 23, Larry Jones, to supply the spar. He responds in magnificent fashion. The third quarter score up the advantage to 19 points. Nebraska's utility is underscored by a telling statistic. Through three quarters, the Huskers have averaged less than half a yard on first down. Rusty Medeiros is having a career night. And so is Mr. Huerta. Joe Moore will hold. Ball put down, kick is high. He's got the accuracy. He has got the distance. 54 yards for Carlos Huerta. Carlos Huerta's 54-yarder, a personal best, caps the hurricane scoring. Leading 22-0, entering quarter number four, the Miami defense will close the case for number one, and do so convincingly. On this night, Miami stakes its claim to the national title by simply eviscerating the nation's number one rocking attack. Nebraska manages less than 200 total yards, and that goose egg never does go away. This is the first time Nebraska has been shut out since 1973. The coup de grace will be administered by the underrated Hurricane Ground game. Larry Jones is voted the game's MVP, and Miami emphasizes its balance by literally running out the final half of the fourth quarter. The one-sided 22 to nothing victory caps a spectacular campaign. For the fourth time in nine years, Miami has won a national championship. Ben Holdren is here at the CS TV Fieldhouse. Man, we saw plenty of familiar faces on that juggernaut team from Miami. Speaking of juggernauts, coming up next, the magic and the memories, featuring the epic football rivalry between Michigan and Notre Dame. Over the last 15 years, they've played the most 